The other day I saw this effect of particles moving along the surface of a head. And it was created inside Cinema 4D using X particles. And I thought it was kind of cool. So I figured I would take a look at how I could create that inside Houdini. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a geometry node to start off with. And then we'll dive inside that and just bring in the test geometry for the template head. That just gives us something to work with to start off with. So after that, we're going to need a pop network. So we'll go ahead and drop that in. And right away, you're going to see that we have this black box, which is not obviously ideal. Can't really see anything that's going on here. The reason that we have this black box is because on the geometry, there is a bunch of different attributes, which we don't want. So to get rid of that, we can just do a clean. And we can just remove all those attributes. And now we can see our particles. So let's go ahead and dive into the dotnet. And inside here, we have just the basics of a pop network. I said dotnet, I meant popnet. So this is a particle network. So to start off, the input or the source input is going to be based off of the first input of our, uh, our pop solver or our pop network here. So the clean node that we have. And I'm going to just go to the birth rate here. I'm going to up that a little bit. So I'm going to double that up to 10,000 to just give us a little bit more particles. So now if I click play, you can see that we have a bunch of particles being spawned onto the surface of our head. I'm going to go ahead and toggle real time as well. Go ahead and start that over. So we don't have any movement to this. To get movement, we need to drop in a pop wind. And I'll go ahead and wire that up. And once I give this some amplitude, something like that, and I click play, you see we have our particles flying all over the place. Now I'm going to just play with the swirl size a little bit, drop that down a little bit here, maybe change the roughness a little bit as well. See what that gives us. That's pretty okay. It's kind of irrelevant what it looks like at the moment because that's obviously not what it's going to look like in the end. So we need to have these particles constrained to the surface of this geometry. Now we have this mouth geometry inside here, which you wouldn't necessarily want, but it's whatever for this, this demonstration. You'd want it to be all kind of one geometry. You don't want the, you probably want it just along the surface of the head with the mouth closed, nothing inside. But like I said, this will work for our purposes here. So to get them to constrain to the geometry, I'm gonna use a SOP solver. So we'll drop that in fire that up and we'll dive inside here. So to start off, it's gonna bring in our particles and then we want to obviously bring, or additionally bring in the object that we wanna constrain our particles to. So drop in an object merge and then I'm gonna go ahead and select that clean node that we had before. And then we're gonna use a ray sop to confine these particles to the surface. So what this does, it takes the input, which is our particle, it's going to find the minimum distance once we set this to minimum distance. It's going to find the minimum distance from the position of the particle to the object that we provide to the second input. And it's going to constrain that particle to that position on the object. So if I go ahead and jump back up here and I click play, you can see we have our particles flowing along the surface of our object, which is pretty cool. So we need to create the trails now. So there's a super useful node inside Houdini called the trail node. Imagine that, that we can use to create the trails. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop the birth rate down to something a lot lower just so we can see what's going on here. Maybe a little bit higher than that. Give us a few particles. So we've got a few particles here. So with the trail node, if I go ahead and up this trail length to something like 10, you can see that we start to have some trails going on behind our object, which is pretty cool. And we can change the spacing of these by adjusting this trail increment. Now, if you go too high, you see the 
trail starts to uh, it starts to delete points basically. So don't bring that too high. I'm going to leave it at one for now. That's fine for our purposes here. And after that, we're going to use an add node. Go ahead and wire this on up. And come over to this polygons and we're going to go by group. Now, initially it's going to just create a line between a bunch of these. Now, if I go ahead and look at our trail node here, come over to the geometry spreadsheet and take a look at our points. We have some different attributes here. Now, if I scroll along, there should be an ID attribute, which there is. So this ID attribute is basically what we're going to use in this add node for our, uh, our group here. So we want to do by attribute and we'll just type in ID. And once I do that, you see that we start to have these trails. So if I click play, you can see that I got these particle trails flowing across the surface of our head. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump back into our pop net and just up this back to something like 10,000 and take a look again here. Now this looks okay, but I think that it is kind of uniform, which I don't really like. So to get some more interesting movement, I'm gonna go ahead and move this across here. So like I said, this is the geometry that is going to have the particles spawn on. So we can go ahead and change this. So let's create a sphere, polygon. Let's go to just a polygon. Let's crank this up to like 10. Go ahead and take a look at this as well. Maybe something like a hundred. And let's do a mountain node. And we're gonna crank up this amplitude a little bit. Maybe change the element size to something like that. Change the offset a little bit. Just give us some kind of weird, unique shape. And once I plug this back into our pop net, let's actually Go back to our first frame, take a look at this. So this is what it looks like before. If I look back at our object here, see just kind of uniform across the entire object of our head, which like I said, is all right, depending on what you're looking for. But once I wire this mountain node into our input, you see, well, it's kind of hard to tell in this example, I guess. But if I, Play with some of the settings maybe drop this down a little bit maybe i'll drop it back down to the 5000 not 50000 and actually part of the problem is i have this life expectancy set to 100 so this is in seconds so i'm going to go ahead and set this down to one second go ahead come back in here so now our particles are our lines aren't going on forever it's not filling up the entirety of our head nearly as much but maybe I'll play with different settings here give us something else there it's a little bit easier to tell based on that setting so if we take a look back at our mountain node it's got this sort of a shape going on and that just really breaks up the spawning of the particles give us a nice non-uniform look so they're no longer spawning in the same spot and they don't flow just in the same directions. They kind of move across. Gives us this nice breakup, which I think looks pretty good. Now you could also animate this, this offset to give you some, some even different looks, which I think would be pretty cool. But once we have this all set up, all we have to do is add a material onto this. And I'm gonna use Redshift to render this. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna pin this, go ahead and add a new pane tab. Go to material context, we'll do RS builder or material builder. Go ahead and delete this because Redshift 3.5 has a new standard material, which I wanna get in the habit of using. So go ahead, pump that into our surface. And then we need some color onto our particles. So the way that we can do this is we're going to use a RS point attribute, sorry, not a point attribute, it's a vertex attribute. 
And then I'm just gonna type in age here because that's one of the attributes that we have on our geometry spreadsheet. So let's see, where is it? Age, so right here. It's going to change based on the life of the particle, so anywhere from zero to one, which gives us something that we can easily remap. And at the start of the life, we can control the color, and we can also control the color at the end of its life, which gives us some cool looks. So let's go ahead and just pump this into the base color for the moment. And I go ahead and assign that material. Let's jump up to our redshift, click on our little redshift node there, and then we'll bring up our render view. And we're gonna get nothing right away. Nothing very good right away, anyways. Let's go ahead and set our camera here. We're gonna lock this into place. And I'm gonna drop in a light dome as well. Just give us something there to light our particles. And then we also need to come into this redshift object and come over to strands. I'm gonna go ahead and render them as strands. And let's see, where did my render view go? There it is. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And actually, I wanna turn off the environment of this just so I have just our particles here. So right away, they are huge, which is not what we want. So we'll come back into this strands and we'll go to our scale. Let's go down to like 0.1, maybe 0 0.03 or even 0 0.01. And that gives us these nice strands. So at the start of their life, uh, they're going to be kind of blackish, and then they're going to be white at the end of their life. But we can go ahead and remap that using a RS ramp. Just wire that in, and let's go ahead. Maybe we'll make this a green. And at the end of their life, maybe just change the color a bit. I don't know. Maybe something like this orangish color gives us something kind of cool to look at, kind of like that. And you can set this to whatever you want, but you can also use different attributes in here. So if you want to do something else, by all means do so. But I think the age gives you a pretty cool look. You can also use the RT render. And it will render super quickly. Uh, I mean, the regular production render render is pretty quick as well, but RT does it even quicker. And it's not super necessary to have a ton of the, the light um, going on here be super accurate at least. Now, you're gonna have the whole object be see-through to if you render it just out like this. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's go ahead and just, just object merge our test head back in. And we didn't do any, ob or any sort of uh, manipulation to it, so it wouldn't really matter if we dropped in a new one. Let's go ahead, drop in a transform node, and we want this to be pretty much the same size, just a tiny bit smaller. So if I go to 0 0.997, we can see the, uh, the particles on the outside of our object now. I'm also gonna drop in a material, and let's go ahead and just duplicate this. I'm gonna delete these, and let's go ahead and set the color to pretty dark. Up the roughness here. And then we'll just set that to be the material that we want to use. And now we have kind of the basics of this setup. And you can set up your depth of field. You set up your lights differently if you want. Uh, make it look a little bit nicer. Something like, let's maybe turn this down a little bit. Uh, let's turn the intensity way down. That's pretty solid. Let's leave our camera right here. Let's go ahead, bring this over. Gonna move that out of the way for the moment. Bring in an area light, control and click. Just kind of frame that up. Let's see what this is looking like. Let's set our camera correctly. Go ahead and refresh that. Looks like giving us something. 
Let's turn up the intensity a little bit. It's all right for now. Let's go ahead, we'll create another area light. Something from the camera's perspective, maybe up from above, or I mean below, I mean. Just center that up. And just affect this light a little bit. Give us something cool. I don't know, play with the different lighting, the different colors, but that's kind of the basics of this whole setup. Pretty easy to render out, get some different looks inside of here. Let's go ahead, just get rid of that for the moment. Maybe we'll find a different frame here. Give us a completely different look than what we got. But yeah, that's kind of the basics of these particles moving along the surface of our object. It's pretty simple to do, but it's definitely something that's super useful. That ray stop is actually something that you're going to use a lot for a lot of different things. Uh, it's definitely good to know how to use that for procedural setups, for creating a bunch of different things. It's, it's extremely useful. So definitely something that you want to take a look at and use more, find them at different uses for that. So anyways, uh, hopefully this helped you out. It was interesting for you guys. Uh, I've got a bunch of other videos on my channel that have to deal with Houdini as well as Redshift, Cinema 4D, a little bit on Clarice and Octane as well. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you guys check out those videos. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.